The mother-in-law of Abubakar Suma Oro, Italy's only black MP, has agreed to pay one of her workers two years of unpaid wages as part of a case that has seen her probed for fraud and embezzlement. Mary Teres Mukamitsindo, who runs the Caribou and Consortio Aid Cooperatives, agreed in a legal deal Tuesday to pay a woman all owed wages and extras from 2021 to 2022 for her work at two migrant farm cooperatives south of Rome. The growing scandal has dealt a severe political blow to Abubakar Sumauro, Italy's best known activist for migrants' rights who only entered Parliament last month after winning a seat in a national election for his Green and Left Party. It has also prompted his self-suspension from his Green Left Party. On Tuesday, Italian police said they were almost done with investigations. Although he himself is not under investigation, on Sunday, cooperative workers said they had been fooled by the 42-year-old Ivorian-born activist Suma Oro and his wife. According court in Ivory Coast on Wednesday began the long-awaited trial of 18 people accused of abating a deadly terror attack on a beach resort in 2016. But only four defendants were physically present for the proceedings in Abidjan. The others, including the suspected masterminds, are either on the run or being held in Mali. On March 13, 2016, three men wielding assault rifles attacked Grom Bassam, a tourist complex 40 kilometers east of Abidjan. 19 people were killed in the rampage. Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb claimed responsibility for the attack. The assault had a deeply chilling impact on tourism, an important source of foreign exchange for the West African country. My administration commits. Kenyan President William Ruto on Wednesday launched a micro-credit scheme, a key election campaign promise, dubbed Hustler Fund, the scheme is meant to ease access to credit for small and informal businesses, often ignored by traditional lenders. Resourced with nearly $400 million over five years, the fund will allow borrowers to use mobile money to apply for and get loans. One can borrow anywhere between 400 Kenya shillings or $3.5 to 50,000 shillings or $410. At the launch, Ruto decried what he termed as expensive credit. In 2016, East Africa's largest economy introduced interest rate caps in a move to make lending cheaper. But the move backfired as banks cut access to credit, lending only to low-risk borrowers such as the government and large corporations. In 2019, President Uhuru Kenyatta lifted the caps. The opposition has criticized the fund as a pyramid scheme which cannot be sustained. Kenya's economy is under pressure from a historic drought, rising debt and inflation. A special panel charged with establishing whether South African President Cyril Ramaphosa should face impeachment for allegedly covering up a crime submitted its findings to Parliament on Wednesday. Questions. Dragging the President before an impeachment process is a huge decision. It cannot be done on flimsy grounds. There has to be something tangible that you can hold on to before you take that decision. Ramaphosa was accused by South Africa's former spy chief of covering up a robbery of millions of dollars at one of his properties. Parliament will debate the report next week. When we announced that today we'll be receiving this report from the panel, independent panel, we then also announced that on the 6th, by the way, even there, there was consultation with all political parties, and it was agreed to that on the 6th, which is next week, Tuesday, this report will be tabled before the assembly. The debate could lead to a potential vote to remove the president who's denied the accusations against him. A two-thirds majority would be needed to impeach him. I will go to the report as, as the office of the chief whip and call caucus to brief caucus what is the content of the report. At the moment, we'll be shooting from the dark because we don't know what the report is all about. 
The report's filing comes only two weeks before the African National Congress, which has been in power since the end of apartheid, convenes to elect a new leader. Angry protest in Pretoria, South Africa, as the release from prison of the far-right killer of anti-apartheid hero Chris Haney hung in the balance. Janusz Wallace, a 69-year-old immigrant from the then communist Poland, was to be released Thursday after being controversially granted parole by the Constitutional Court. On Tuesday, Wallace was stabbed inside prison. Uh, we are here to express our solidarity with the people of South Africa who feel aggrieved from across all political parties and institutions that have sent us messages and made public messages about this matter. Because as we all know, April 27 was literally written in his blood. Of course, representing uh, thousands of our martyrs of, in the struggle for national liberation and freedom in this country. The decision to release Wallace continues to drive angry protest. On Wednesday, the South African Communist Party, SACP, which Hani used to head, said it was petitioning the courts to go back on its ruling. We respect the rule of law, we respect the constitution, but uh, we are not happy. I think uh, where we are is that uh, the law must be able to recognize the, the morality because uh, morally it cannot be correct that uh, a person who nearly plunged the country into crisis uh, is released just like that. So we are not agreeing. Prison officials armed with rifles and dogs stood guard behind green metal prison gates as protesters chanted. Hani, a hugely popular figure, was shot dead in the driveway of his house on April 10, 1993. <laughs>